Yeah. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, what class number are we on? Turn it on. We have five more classes and we're done. Two more weeks from tomorrow. And when is our health fair? June 5th. June 5th. June 5th. It's going to be a blessing. Um, today's title is the book work. Many of you might be wondering, what does the book work have to do with the health message? So we're going to be talking about that because the book work is to be incorporated in the medical missionary work. So we'll be talking about that and I'll be going over what books we're going to have at the fair, what books you can have when you, whenever you teach health to anyone. We're going to start off with a quote, Testimonies, Volume 4, page 390. We are told if there is one work more important than another, it is that of getting our publications before the public, thus leading them to search the current scriptures. Missionary work introducing our publications into families, conversing and praying with and for them is a good work and one which will educate men and women to do pastoral labor. In publish, Publishing Ministry, page 316, paragraph 3, we are told the temperance question Whenever you hear the word temperance, it's referring to the health message. The temperance question is to receive decided support from God's people. Intemperance is striving for the mastery. Self-indulgence is increasing, and the publications treating on health reform are greatly needed. You hear that? Publications treated on health reform are greatly needed. Literature bearing on this point, which point are we talking about? Temperance. Health reform. Literature bearing on this point is the helping hand of the gospel, leading souls to search the Bible for a better understanding of the truth. The note of warning against the great evil of intemperance should be sounded, and that this may be done, every Sabbath keeper should study and practice the instruction contained in our health periodicals and our health books, and they should do more than this. They should make earnest efforts to circulate these publications among their neighbors. Hmm. Is hear what our work is to do with our health publications? Amen. In Testimonies, Volume 7, page 136, we are told our health books and journals are needed. The people are in sad need of the light shining from the pages of our health books. From the pages of what? Our health books and journals. God desires to use these books and journals as mediums through which flashes of light shall arrest the attention of the people and cause them to heed the warning of the message of the third angel. Did you go in the middle room and get me one of those clipboards that's on the bottom of the shelf? Thank you. The whole clipboard with everything on it. Our health journals are instrumentalities in the field to do a special work in disseminating the light that the inhabitants of the world must have in this day of God's preparation. They wield an untold influence in the interests of health and temperance and social purity reform and will accomplish great good in presenting these subjects in a proper manner and in their true light to the people. So you may not be able to tell them everything about health, but you can give them one of our health brochures. And I'm going to show you guys. This isn't in English. This is in Spanish. But in English, it's called Radiant Living. And you can get this from Family Heritage Books. These are a little more costly than something else I'm going to show you, but they're 50 cents a piece. And you can, the more you get, the, the, um, the lower the cost they put for you. But it has a loss of health. It talks about heart disease, it talks about diabetes, and it talks about the Sabbath. So this is something very good to pass out to people. Another good thing to pass out as when you're going door to door, like we've been doing lately, we're just reading, brother, that Sister White says, when we go door to door, we should leave them <clears throat> health literature. And she calls the health literature the right arm. So this is called Health of the Nations, and it has heart disease in here. It talks about five fruits and vegetables a day. It talks about fiber, cancer, 
foods that fight against cancer. It, it has God's rest day in here. Um, different books that you can order on our, on our subjects, doctrinal subjects. Let's see what else. The Eight Laws of Health. It has cookbooks in here, lifestyle centers that they can go to for health and healing. It talks about what happens when you drink coffee, what happens when you watch TV. So, and this is something very basic, right? You can get a thousand of these in a box for a very low price. I'll tell you guys the price later. But very low. So what I do is I go to my neighbor, I do the community where I live. And if they take the time, if they don't fill out the thing and they say no, I don't give them anything because chances are they're not going to read it. But if they took the time to fill out a community survey, they'll take your paper. So we, we're told to get these out to the people, publications. And we want it to be cost effective. You don't want to go around giving everyone a ministry of health. You get what I'm saying? Not that you can't give some away, but it's not the book that you want to give away to everyone. That's the book you really want to try to sell. Okay. We are told when we, now, when we have our health fair, I'll be going over these books in a moment, whenever you have a health fair, a camp meeting where you teach health, we are told to have our health books and publications there. I'll be going over what books we're going to be having at the health fair. But you don't want to have a health fair without health books, do you? Don't you want them to have access to information that they can take home and study and read it out? And what work did she say is going to open the hearts of the people like nothing else? The health, the health message, the health form, that's right. So when they see that we are intelligent on the subject of health above all other people, they'll say, well, they must know something. Their, their religion must be true because they're the head when it comes to the health message. Okay, now when we sell our books, when we do health fairs or when we go door to door, however we're selling our health books, we are told because books were being sold at low prices, some being specially reduced for the occasion, many were purchased and some by persons not of our faith bought them. So they put them at what kind of a price? Low price. And the people said it must be that these books contain a message for us. So when they saw the books available and they were affordable, said, oh, we must buy these books. They must contain a message for us. These people are willing to make sacrifices in order that we may have them and we will secure them for ourselves and our friends. So that's what goes through the minds of the people when they see our books at a low price. And so what does it cause them to want to do? Buy the books, right? That's in Review and Herald, August 13, 1908, paragraph 10. She goes on to say, but dissatisfaction was expressed by some of our own people. A stop must be put to this work. She's talking about, they were talking about a stop must be put to the work of putting the books at a low price. Because selfish rises up in a lot of people's hearts, right? Have you ever come across some of our books that are so expensive that your average person would not be able to afford them? Absolutely. This is what she said they were saying. Dissatisfaction was expressed by some of our own people. A stop must be put to this work, one said, or our business will be spoiled. So what were they thinking of, the people or finance? finance. They were thinking of finances. As one brother was carrying away an armful of books, someone had bought up a whole bunch of books, they had them all in their arms, and they were walking away like this. One brother was walking away, another brother said, my brother, what are you doing with so many books? Then I heard the voice of our counselor saying, forbid them not. Who's our counselor? Jesus, Jesus is our counselor. Forbid them not. This is a work that should be done. The end is near. Now she said that in her day. What about in our day? Already much time has been lost. When these books should have been in circulation, sell them far and near. Scatter them like the what? Leaves of autumn. Leaves of autumn. This work is to continue without the forbiddings of anyone. What does that mean? No one is to stop this. And she was referring to putting it at a higher price. She said no one is to do that. Souls are perishing out of Christ. Let them be warned of his soon appearing in the clouds of heaven. Now listen to what she said. Some of the workers continue to appear much cast down. Because they thought what? What did they think? 
prices were what? Too low. One was weeping and said, these are doing the publishing work an injustice by purchasing these books at so low a price. Besides, this work is depriving us of some of the revenue by which our work is sustained. The voice replied, you are meeting with no loss. What does that mean? You are meeting with people who are not going to suffer. So should we be in this work for a profit? Or should we be in this work for to get the books out to the people? We do want to get some money back because we want to be able to replace the books, right? But we want it at such an affordable price that if somebody walked in that door and they wanted several books, they can afford it. So we're going to talk about what we think each one should be. We just read where she said, uh, they said, oh, we're, we don't have the revenue to, and then they heard a voice, you are meeting with no loss. So putting them back, and I have been trained improperly regarding this subject. I was taught to put them at a higher price. But from what I've studied in my research, we're to put them at a lower price. We want them, we want them low enough where the people can afford, but high enough where we can get more books. You know what I'm saying? If you pay $2 for the book, you don't want to sell the book for a dollar because then you can't replenish that book. You get what I'm saying? But we're not trying to make a profit. A little profit is fine to help some of the, the ministry work, but to try to make a big profit is not a good thing. That's not the work she says that we're to do. Okay, let me keep going here. So, trivia question. What should our books be? Should they be expensive? No. Now, if it's a good quality book, like this book right here, a book like this in today's day would run you a good two hundred dollars. So some people might think the price of sixty is too high. You get what I'm saying? But it's not not for the quality that you're doing. But again, if somebody really wants this book and they say, "Well, this is all I can afford." and they really need it and want it, should we hold out on them? No, we shouldn't. If it will cover the cost, we should, we should, if we know that they're, now there's some people who say they can't afford it, but they're driving around in Jaguars and they got bling bling, up, they can afford it. But I'm talking about when you're dealing with people who are destitute, we want to work with them where they are. Now, is the price of a book like this going to be the same price of a book like this? Of course not. And you go by what the price of books are in the day that you're living, but you don't have to be as expensive. When they see you're giving a good price, they'll be excited and they'll want, like that guy, walk out with two armfuls. Amen. Okay. We are told the books should be sold in such a way that the author will not left barehanded and that the publishing house shall have a proper margin so that it will have means to carry on its work. Can you guys tell me some publishing places we can order from? Harvest Time. Okay, that's one. Harvest Time Books, what's another one? Someone said Review and Carol. I don't know what the price of their books are. Review and Carol. What about, have you guys heard of these people? Family Heritage Books? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you some of the books. Today's class is going to be very short and very simple. Family Heritage Books is an excellent place. I'll show you the books that I got from them. Family Heritage Books. I don't know where they're located. They're the ones, let me see. Let me see where they are. They're the ones who made the Radiant Living magazines. And they have foods that heal and plants that heal. You guys see these books? And they have Kids in the Kitchen Cookbook. 
These are the books we're going to have at our health fair. Optimal Diet Cookbook, Seven Secrets Cookbook, and a good thing to, well, thing to do when you're ever doing books like this is you can go a little lower than what the cover price is, and they'll think they'll get, they're getting a really good discount. Health Power is another book that they have. This is a wonderful book right here. This is part of the CHIP program, which is the Coronary Health Improvement Project by Dr. Hans Deal. This covers every disease, major disease, heart disease, hypertension, stroke, cancer, diabetes, osteoporosis, arthritis, obesity, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, and drug abuse. It also talks about digestion, starch, sugar, bread, protein, milk, meat, fat, cholesterol, fiber, salt, vitamins. So when you're at your table, whoever's going to be working table, and they say, do you have a book on protein? Do you have a book where I can learn more about sugar or carbohydrates or salt? Or tell them, oh yeah, this book right here. Excellent book. This is a very good book. I got this from Family Heritage Books. Family Heritage also sells Enjoy It. It's a, it's a wonderful book. And it's all about health. It talks about the different people in the blue zones. Our seven dead medicine in the blue zones. Does anyone know what the blue zones are? If you don't know what it is, raise your hand. Okay. The blue zones are five, well I've heard it's nine areas now, but there are five areas Blue zones, <coughs> there were five, I hear there's now nine. And there are areas around the world where these people live longer than any other group of people. They have more cent centenarians, centarians, how's the word? Centenarians? Sanitarians. What'd you say? Sanitarian. No, no, somebody who's 100 or older. Centarian, I think that's the word, C-E-N-T-A-R-I-A-N. They have more groups of those, and these people are not 100 years old in the hospital on a life support. These people are walking, they're skiing, they're, uh, they're doing, one guy was 97, he was on a, a jet skis, not jet skis, skis, foot skis in the water. And um, the only place in North America is Loma Linda, California. We're the only place in, in North America. We, of all the groups that they study, because of a religious belief, we're passing it on to our children, and they're passing it on to their children. But the Sardinians in Italy, and the Okinawans in Japan, and the people in Greece and different parts of the world, they're not doing it for religious reasons. So it's not considered like important to the younger generation. So they're adopting McDonald's, Burger King. And so even though their parents live to be 100, their offspring are declining in age. But Seventh-day Adventists who are living this lifestyle are teaching it to their families. Even the ones who eat meat are living longer than your average people eating meat because they keep one day a week. They don't smoke, they don't drink, you get what I'm saying? So even seven dead men who eat meat, which they shouldn't, are living longer than your average person. Seven dead men who eat cheese and dairy live an average of nine, ten years longer than your fellow American. But the vegans, guess how much longer they're living? years longer than your average American, on average. Isn't that something? What do you want, this or this? Yes, this. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. Now I'm going to read some quotes about when we purchase our books, when you sell books, when you cast books door to door, there are some criteria of what the prophet of the Lord says are acceptable books, and are not acceptable books. And I'm going to go over those criteria with you guys. In Publishing Ministry, page 217, paragraph 1, we are told none of our... Oh, one thing I wanted to say. I forgot to cover some other books. 
Who's heard of international meat crisis? This covers the mercury in the fish, the mad cow's disease, everything going on with the meat today. We're going to have this book there. We're going to have You Can Quit Tobacco. Who's heard of the vaccination crisis? Do you think these books should be at our health fair? Absolutely. This is information people need. Ministry of Healing. Forgive it. I've worn it out. Should we also have good controversy here? Do you know she, well, I'll read a quote in a minute, but she said this is the most important book. Did you guys know that? Outside the Bible? Yes, she said this is the most important book we're to circulate. So we want, because is it supposed to be just health or health in the gospel? Health it's to be gospel. health in the gospel. So we're going to have the great controversy and steps to Christ at our health fair. Is that understandable? Okay, now, have you seen books of ours through the years with pictures on the front? Pictures of people and stuff? Have you seen the newly illustrated great controversy with all the pictures inside? I want to read some quotes as far as the criterion. And this is just to keep in mind when you buy books of your own to give to your neighbors yourself or if you go to another church and you guys are purchasing books. And I just recently found some of this information out through doing my research. The first criterion is none of our pictures are to have any pictures of, none of our books are to have pictures of cruel persecution. Let me read that. It says, avoid pictures of cruel persecution. Catholic pictures of persecution and burning should be kept out of our publications. It is enough to read of these wicked deeds without trying to bring them in all their terrible details before the eyes. When I was a child, who's saying this? Sister White. Fox's Book of Martyrs was given to me to read. I saw the pictures representing various horrible acts of cruelty. I, would, I could scarcely eat or sleep. Now, when I saw the pictures, they didn't do anything to me. So I thought, why did it freak her out? It didn't freak me out. Because I saw exorcists when I was a little girl. My mind had been deadened. It was desensitized. That's right. But just from seeing a picture. Now I remember when I was little, when I first saw a scary movie, I was freaked out. That's how Sister White was from reading and looking at a picture in the book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Is Fox's Book of Martyr a good book? Yes. yes, but make sure you buy it without the pictures of the cruelty. She says, day and night I was passing through the horrors, identifying myself with the suffering ones. I almost lost confidence in God because he allowed such things to happen to those people. She almost lost confidence in God because of a picture. Pictures say a thousand words, don't they? Criteria number two. No animated or comical pictures. Did you know that? None of our books are supposed to have cartoon stuff or animated pictures. The stuff we share with our children should not be animated as far as cartoonish. Listen to what she says here. Bible pictures of superior quality. And that was from Publishing Ministry, page 217, paragraph 1. This is paragraphs 2 and 3. The dummy of thoughts from the Mount of Blessing with the illustrations I received. The illustrations I could not possibly accept under any consideration. Some of them look as if prepared for a comic almanac. Do we have books like that in Adventism? Yes. Absolutely. Pictures to represent Bible scenes must be no cheap designs. The knowledge which God imparts is not of a character to belittle our ideas of sacred things. The glory of God must be kept before the minds, not the cheap, earthly representations that imprint in the memory scenes which give a false conception of Christ and heavenly things. A proper illustration of Bible scenes requires talent, of a superior quality. With these cheap common productions, the sacred lessons of the Bible disdain comparison. You know our charts? See the angels on these charts? Right here? She said on this chart, these angels are appropriate. But there were other people making charts. And she said that the angels on the charts were not of heavenly origin. And she refused the charts because of the pictures. But she said the chart Brother Nichols did, 
It was not cheap, and it was not cartoonish. You see the, the angels right here? These three angels? And the angels here, they don't look cartoonish. Anything cartoonish, she said, should not be in our materials. Okay, another criteria. We covered no animated, no cheap designs. Nothing bearing a Catholic resemblance, and she said no Trinity hand sign. Did you guys know that? Have you seen any of our Steps to Christ books where he's doing this? Oh, I remember when I first came in the church, and I was like, that's what we used to do. I was raised a Catholic. Listen to this. This is eight manuscript release, page 456, paragraph two. I wish to say to you that I am sadly disappointed in the cuts prepared for such a book as the life of Christ. I consider that if Brother A accepts such figures that his eye and taste has lost its cunning, you cannot expect me to be pleased with such productions. Look at these figures critically, and you must see that they are either made from Catholic designs or Catholic artists. So we don't want books with halos. We don't want books with Madonna and the baby. You know what I'm saying? The picture of Mary has a man's face. You know the Lord's Supper? You have the picture of the Lord's Supper? Do you know a lot of those men look like women? She said the pictures of the men should look like men, and the pictures of the women should look like women. And doesn't the Bible say that it is a shame for a man to have long hair? The longest you see mentioned in the spirit prophecy of Christ's hair is resting on his shoulders. So anything longer than his shoulders is considered having long hair for a man. Not to criticize anybody, not to condemn anybody. And anything shorter than the shoulders is considered too short for a woman. We're told in what chapters it pass in 1 Corinthians 11 or 2 Corinthians 11? That the woman's hair is given to her for her what? Glory. glory. For her glory. And it says it is not to be shaven or shorn. That doesn't mean that you don't trim it. You want your hair to look. There's some people wear their hair so long, it's too heavy, they have headaches, and it looks sloppy, it's raggedy, it doesn't, it looks dead. You want to look presentable. But we women of our pictures are to look like women, and men are to look like men. And none of our pictures of Christ should have them wearing long hair. And a lot of our books have had that. And she said, this is not to be in our books. Let me keep going. The picture of Mary has a man's face. The representations of Christ with the two fingers prominent. That's the, the you know, the Trinity cross that they do. While the others are closed is wholly a Catholic sign. And I object to this. I see but very little beauty in any of the faces or persons. There is the scenery of nature, landscape scenery that is not as objectionable, but I could never rest my eyes upon the face pictures without pain. I would much prefer to have no pictures than representations that are not representations, but disfigurements of the truth. Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus Christ black? Was he black? What was he? He was a Jew, right? Yes. Does Sister White say he was Jew? I mean, black? No. She talks about his skin color. He was not a black man and he was not a white man. And we should not represent him as either of the two so that we can win the people. Because she said what we're doing is we're putting a disgrace to the gospel. So when we buy our books, we have to be careful what we buy. We're not trying to appease any culture or race. Is about bringing the truth before the people. And she said, our publications must not speak contrary to what we teach as the people. Is that understandable? Let me give you an example. Do we have a dress message? Then why do we have pictures of women in bathing suits and some of our health stuff and wearing shorts and tank tops when it's contrary to our health message? We are not to have these things in our books. So when we sell the books, we want to make sure that the pictures 
match what we teach and preach as a people. Is that understandable? Because she said it paints a different picture. And then it brings the truth down here. And you can read all this in a book called Publishing Ministry. It has all the compilation of the quotes regarding this. She says, where is a discerning eye? Better pay double price or treble and have pictures, if pictures must be had, that will not pervert facts. I wish there had not been an attempt to make one representation, but send out the book and let it make a place for itself. I call these faces and the pictures and scenes so poorly represented that it is a perversion of the facts. She was talking about the woman looking like Mary, looked like a man and stuff. That's homosexuality. That's trans, what's it called? Transgender? Yes. They, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to bring a cheap gospel in a lot of these pictures so they can win even the homosexuals. And we have to be very careful not to do that. So another one of the criteria is... said best to leave pictures of angels. Let me read this. This is Publishing Ministry 219, paragraph 5, and CW, what's CW, brother? Councils to Writers. Councils to Writers, thank you. Page 171, paragraph 2. Artists cannot truly represent Christ. The artist may do his best to represent the things his eyes have never seen, but his representations are so far beneath the reality that I am pained as I behold them. Neither God nor heaven nor Christ, who is the image of the Father, can be truly represented by the art of man. If the Lord had thought it advisable to represent Christ in this way, his person would have been described in the writings of the apostle. So what does that tell us? We should try to portray Christ of how he looks, right? And don't we see that in a lot of our books? Yes. She said we shouldn't do it. Okay, we keep going. Let me read a few other things here. Okay. It said care should be exercised in the matter of illustrating. Much money should not be invested in this line. Another quote is, the glory of God must be kept before the mind's eye, not the cheap earthly representations that imprint in the memory scenes which give a false conception of Christ and heavenly things. A proper illustration of Bible scenes requires talent of a superior quality. With these cheap common productions, the sacred lessons of the Bible disdain comparison. God forbid that we should please the devil God forbid we should what? She said we're pleasing the devil when we have these cheap pictures in our books. God forbid we should please the devil by lowering the standard of eternal truth by using illustrations that men, women, and children will make sport of. And that's counsels to writers, did you say? 167 paragraph 2. The thousands of dollars expended in illustrations could be invested in getting out books and selling them cheaply. Selling them how? Cheaply. Now, you guys remember the beginning of our health classes, I had all those health books, the thick ones. They're nice, but they're very expensive. Why? Because there's a lot of pictures. Now, someone like me who's a teacher and I want to use illustrations, yes, but your average person cannot afford those books. So, something like this can be affordable. You get what I'm saying? So, we want to be able to get books before the people that are affordable to them. We are told it is too late, altogether too late, to depend upon the expensive covers of a book or its abundant illustrations for its sale. The books that the people need should be issued free from all display. So they should be what? So we didn't know this, right? We have a lot of books we didn't know, but now we know, right? For the future when we purchase more. The saving of the thousands of dollars expended in illustrations would make it possible for the books to be sold. Now like this, when you're doing the cover, the laws of health, that's nice. It lets them know what. But everything else in here is plain, huh? But have you seen books where it's picture after picture? 
some of those books are very costly. The savings of the thousands of dollars expended in illustrations would make it would make it possible for the books to be sold at a price that would enable many to obtain them. The Lord has not inspired this enthusiasm. It is a part of the work that has led away from the simplicity of the faith. We're told in every line of the work, economy must be practiced. We're told our books are being filled with expensive pictures, and this makes them too costly to give away and too costly for those persons to buy who need them most. And a lot of our books, you'll see, not Harvest Time, but other publishers, they have pictures in the books, and they're expensive. One book can cost you as much as $75. That's a lot for your average American in 2011, isn't it? But they can afford these smaller books, and even these books right here. So we want to make sure the books that we put. Now, if we were in Malibu or Beverly Hills doing this, you could have those more expensive books. But here, where we are in Lancaster, make sure you have something that's affordable to don't have the books out there to try to make a profit. Alrighty, just a few more. We talked about no scenes of horror. I think that was in the quotes. Alrighty, let me see if we have this other. Here it is. Okay. I told you I was going to read to you something about great controversy. Where's my, here it is. We were talking about the great controversy because the gospel and the health message is to be united. Did you guys know she said the worst evil that exists in the church is when the medical missionary health message and the gospel message are not united? And did you know she said that is the church the body? Absolutely. Is the right arm and the right hand the medical missionary work? Did you know she said that the body, the church, without the right hand and right arm, so the church without the medical missionary work is ineffective and deficient? What does that mean? If our churches are teaching this gospel message and they don't have the medical missionary part connected to it, it's going to do nothing for you. Because in order for them to receive the truth, their minds have to be cleared, right? Because with the law we what? I mean, with the mind we do what? We serve the law of God, according to Romans 7, 25, right? But can we serve it the way we're supposed to, if it's filled with all the junk of the world? No. And that's why this message is so important, is to prepare a people. Is it to make healthy sinners? No. Is to lead the people to Christ. Amen. Now let me read to you about great controversy and then we're going to be done. Oh, one other thing I wanted to share. This was sent to us like two weeks ago in one of the boxes of items that we purchased. And this is Balanced Living Health Tracks. And you can get a pack of 100 for that much, which is a very good price. And they have the doctors still make house calls. That's the laws of health. Diabetes, caffeine, soda, superfoods for cancer, exercise, alcohol, smoking, blood pressure, vegetarianism. If people want to know why you're vegetarian, these are wonderful tracks. So when we have our PowerPoint presentation in this room over here, we're going to have four PowerPoint presentations on the day of uh, the health fair. And when we give brochures to the people when they walk in, going to tell them what room is going to have what at one time. And so when we do diabetes, we'll have diabetes handouts. Whenever you do some type of class, always have something to hand out to the people. If you're giving it away, you want it to be cost effective. So a hundred of those for that price is cost effective. So when we do diabetes, we're going to have diabetes handouts. When we do, you can quit tobacco, we're going to give those handouts. You get what I'm saying? So this is a really good company, and it's called Hamblin's, H-A-M-B-L-I-N, apostrophe S, Hope, presents Balanced Living Health Tracks. And for those who are watching and would like to order, you can call 
0016 and the gentleman's name is TT, like two T's. And then the website is Hope Source, www.hopesource.com. And so if anyone watching is interested, if you want to have some on your own at home, when you go to your neighbors, you can hand them different tracks. Do you know we're told we should have tracks everywhere we go? But are we doing that? No. I remember when I first came to this message, I had a track on every subject. And everywhere I went, but we lose that what? We lose that first love. We have to get back to it. This is a part of our work. Coming to church on Sabbath and coming to prayer meeting is not being a Christian. We have to be busy people. Okay, let me read to you about great controversy. Where did I put the book? It's right here. Listen to what she says about this book. Let there be an interest awakened in the sale of these books. She's talking about patriarchs and prophets and the great controversy. So the people were not overwhelmed with books. I decided to just have this and Steps to Christ on the table where Pastor Cross was going to be. Oh, and also the brochure to have a stronger marriage by Amazing Facts. Okay. We are told let there be an interest awakened in the sale of these books. Their sale is essential. What does that mean? It's life. That's right. It's life. It's necessary for life. For they contain timely instruction from the Lord. They should be appreciated as books that bring to the people light that is especially needed just now. Now that was in her day. What about in our day? Therefore, these books should be widely distributed. Those who make a careful study of the instruction contained in them and will receive it as from the Lord will be kept from receiving many of the errors that are being introduced. Those who accept the truths contained in these books will not be led into false paths. Patriarchs and prophecy, great controversy. And that was 20 manuscript release. This is page 440, paragraphs 2 and 3. She says, Patriarchs and prophets and the great controversy are books that are especially adapted to those who have newly come to the faith that they may be established in the truth. So we shouldn't be giving child guidance that's a compilation. That's all on one subject. We need to be giving this book and Patriarchs and Prophets to our new people in the faith. These are the books she said to give to the people. The dangers are also testimonies. You know, when I got baptized in the church 20 years ago, a family gave me a whole set of the testimonies. And I had just learned about the testimonies two weeks before, and I said, ooh, I want those books. This family did not know that I said that, but the Lord opened the way, and I was reading those books every day. Do you know we're counseled that the conflict series, which they call the Spirit of Prophecy and the Testimonies, she says we are to read and reread and reread until we wear out the pages? Are we doing that? Not really, huh? we got to get back into our books because we're going to be held accountable for not knowing what's in them. But people who newly come to the faith, this book of Patriarchs and Prophets should be the gifts that we give them. Amen. She says, the dangers are pointed out that should be avoided by the churches. Those who become thoroughly acquainted with the lessons in these books will see the dangers before them and will be able to discern the plain, straight path marked out for them. They will be kept from strange paths. They will make straight paths for their feet, lest the lane be turned out of the way. Isn't that amazing? And that's a promise. Never have testimonies been more clearly brought before the people than those that have recently been traced by my pen. God bids me urge upon the attention of our people the importance of their study. Let this work begin now. She goes on to say, Truths barricaded by a thus saith the Lord. How many have read carefully patriarchs and prophets, the great controversy, and the desire of ages. I wish all to understand that my confidence in the light that God has given stands firm because I know that the Holy Spirit's power magnified the truth and made it honorable, saying, this is the way walk ye in it. In my books, the truth is stated, barricaded by it, thus said the Lord. Amen. God would be pleased to see the desire of ages in every home. In this book is contained the light he has given upon his word. Let me read two more about 
great controversy. The desire of ages, patriarchs, and prophets, great controversy, and Daniel and the Revelation. There is precious instruction. These books must be regarded as of special importance, and every effort should be made to get them before the people. Now, I'm starting small with this and Steps to Christ. It's a, it's a beginning. If I'm not mistaken, there's a place they can order more. Yeah, they can order more books back here. And all these books that you look in, you'll see that there's places in there where they can order books. So this work is very important. We cannot have the book work separated from the health message. Wherever you teach health, that's why when we go door to door, aren't we always carrying these? She said here to pass the literature, health literature, everywhere we go. So that is why we're doing a topic on this today. seed, but like a mango seed and a cashew seed, you can't eat those stuff. Big. Oh, no, no. Not all fruit seeds, but there's a lot of fruit seeds you can't eat. But see, we were also given the herb-bearing seed as part of 
part of our diet. Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was all fruit seed. It was also herb bearing seed. But the herb wasn't given until after sin. Listen to this. This is Genesis 3, 18, 17, 18, and 19. Unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curses the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Now we're going to sweat because of sin. And we need to replace that sweat from the foods that come out of the ground. Because they get the minerals and stuff growing straight up out of the dirt, right? So the green grass, to me, is the green herb of the field. I wouldn't mix it with the fruit, personally. But the Bible says, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. You get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So the seeds are permitted to eat prior to sin with the fruit. They ate it, you know, God gave it to them in the beginning, but the herb wasn't until after. So there's a difference between, and we talked last week or the week before, what is considered a tree in the Bible? What does the Bible say bears fruit? There was three things that are considered trees. You have a tree, like an apple tree, you have a bush, like the berries and stuff grow on, and you have a vine. Now, some people try to tell me, well, not all vines are fruit. I said, I disagree. Because anything with a seed within itself, the Bible tells us, is a fruit. And Jesus calls a vine a fruit, and then we'll be done right after this, in John chapter 15. He says, I am the vine, and my father is the husband. Verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. fruit. So he's saying the vine bears the fruit. Bushes bear fruit, vines bear fruit, trees bear fruit. If it comes from a tree, a bush, or a vine, it's a fruit. If it comes up out of the ground, not on a vine, not on a bush, not on a tree, where you could just yank it out the ground like spinach, kale, green onion, that's a vegetable. Okay? Matthew 26, 29. What's, let me read that one. Matthew 26, 29. See, and I want to stick with the thus said the Lord. And not with man. See, man wants to eat certain things together, so they make excuses. Well, this turns into alkaline when it's in your body. If we don't have spirit prophecy to support it, we need to leave it alone. Because then we're treading on dangerous ground. You get what I'm saying? Okay, what did you say, Matthew 26? Yeah, verse 29. 29. Because the grape, the grape has seed in it. What did you say? So the grape, the natural grape has seed That's in it. That's right, and it comes on a vine. Yeah. The bell peppers grow on a vine, don't they? Or a bush? Bush. They, okay, pumpkins grow on a vine. Oh, yeah. Eggplants grow on a vine. Yes. Tomatoes grow on a vine. That's right. Squash grows on a vine. Melons grow on a vine. Those are all fruit. And they're not neutral fruit. Does the prophet Lord say subacid fruit, citrus fruit, or does she say fruit? fruit? Eat your fruit in one meal and your vegetables in another. The only thing where we see in the spirit of prophecy where she mixes a fruit and a vegetable is the juice of a lemon with the greens. And that's it. And because that turns into alkaline, and medical science has shown that it is acceptable. It's the only one that can do that. Where you can mix it with the green and it is acceptable. Okay, so Matthew 26, 29. What does Deuteronomy 29, 29 say? The secret things belong unto, God. belong unto the Lord, but those things that are revealed. If it's not revealed, it doesn't belong to us, and we shouldn't speculate. If it's revealed, it's for us. So if you see the prophet Lord taking lemon juice and mixing it with the greens. Many years after the health message was given, it's okay. It's the juice, it's not the fruit. But then we go into, well, we'll squeeze the juice of this fruit, and then you have to be careful. I say, people, be careful. If you don't see it in the spirit of prophecy, just be careful. And she even goes as far as she said in Council on Dice and Food, 
eat your food in one meal and your vegetable at another. And then one or two paragraphs down, she said she had tomato vermicelli for breakfast. Vermicelli is like angel hair pasta. And she had her greens for lunch. So just in that quote right there, what is that telling you? She, that's telling you that tomatoes are fruit and greens are a vegetable. And she didn't mix the two. Right? Yes. Okay. Matthew 26, 29 says, But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. Thank you, Pastor. Excellent verse. Until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So a vine produces vegetables. It produces fruit. That's right. Amen. Any other questions or comments? Did that answer you? Yes. Okay. You said a vine. Uh, but once again, I'm not here to step on anyone's oh. toes or... I'm not here to tell you how to eat and live. I'm just sharing what Spirit of Prophecy and the Bible tell us. Yes, I'm seeing that there are two types of fruits then. I didn't hear you. What? I'm, from what you just said, I, I'm seeing that there are two types of fruits. You said there are tree bearing fruits, and they also have the vine that bears fruit. You have bush fruit, like, vine fruit, like. and you have um, tree fruit, right. but they're all fruit. Right. Yeah. Berries. Blackberries, raspberries, they grow on a bush. What else grows on a bush? Kumquats. Kumquats. That's, that, wouldn't you call that a tree though? They're kind of high. No. Huh? Like back when we were on a little bush. Blackberries on a tree. Okay, what'd you say? Back when we were on a blackberries, they were on a tree. They're blackberries? On a... They're on bushes out here. I said, what we call blackberries on a tree. What'd you say? We must wind them. A what yeah, would be fruit? Zucchini. Blackberry. zucchini is a fruit, that's right. But would zucchini taste good with grapes? No. You can put it with its like fruit, like a vine fruit, eggplant, squash, um, what else? Cucumbers, tomatoes, huh? Olives, avocado. You can mix it all with that, it tastes good. So you just, you know, what kind of fruit is it? Because some fruit is sweet and some's not, but a fruit is a fruit, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Anything else? Any comments, questions? Because there's people who aren't watching and you might ask a question they might want you to ask. No? Okay. Brother Costco, can you close out for us? <laughs> Jesus' name.